‫האלה הנקוד בפסקה שאמר ‫ואמרו אמן, ‫על ישראל ועל רבנן ועל תלמידיהון. ‫כל תלמידי תלמידיהון, ‫אז כאילו הייתה כמשתה דיבר את הרבים ‫בכל אתר ואתר. ‫העלה נמכות חנן ומתאר וחנן. ‫קדם הרי שלמיה ואמר ואמרו חנן. ‫כדי שאמר אדם ושאמר חנן. ‫אבל אני לא יודע אם אני יכול לדבר. ‫אני לא יודע אם אני יכול לדבר. שמוליק, שמוליק, One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Not yet. Is it working? It is working. Okay. It's working. Not to put it out. Uh -huh. so, no, it's, it's through the wire. It's hard to fold the red wire. <laughs> well, take mine off. Yeah, take it off. No, no, ready, ready, ready. Good. Good to meet you.
Yeah. What you can do we sing by usually? <laughs> Yourself, or you can learn with the Chabrusa. And you learn Fabrengen, maybe discuss in Yonam of Limud, but it's not designed to be an union of Limud. If it was Limud, you, maybe you can achieve more in Limud when you're learning direct from the Sefer. Why do you have to sit by a Fabrengen? I remember there was one Fabrengen where the Rebbe said, in the middle of the Fabrengen, in the middle of the Sikha, the Rebbe said, He's asking himself a question. Why is he sitting by the Fabrengen if he doesn't understand Yiddish? And the Rebbe spoke in Yiddish. So he was addressing somebody. He didn't say who he was addressing. No one can tell who he was talking to. But the Rebbe said, someone is asking the question, why is he sitting by the Fabrengen if he's a of Sivinish? And the Rebbe's answer, as far as I recall, maybe I recall incorrectly, maybe check with other people what the Rebbe's answer. The Rebbe's answer basically didn't address the question he just said he's asking the question because he doesn't have bitl. Why are you asking the question? Because you're lacking in the bitl, you're lacking in humility. You have too much yeshus, too much gaiva. That's why you're asking the question. If you didn't have the gaiva, you wouldn't ask the question. So he didn't have to answer the question. He just kind of eliminated the question. Anyway, in the of the Hasidic of Abrengen, there was a Always very much often quoted the word that Alt Rebbe said once by 
when he was sitting by Ferengi in the time of the Magid. And at the Fabrengi, someone came in begging for a bracha for Rafu Shalema for Mishpacha of theirs. And they were all saying, well, What can we go to the Rebbe? They were in the time of the Magad. They were telling them of the Magad. They why, why are you coming to us? Go, go ask a bracha by the Rebbe. And the guy was kind of uh, upset. You know, I'm asking you guys for a bracha. Give me a bracha. And the Alt Rebbe then said to the people, don't you remember? He said to his chaverim, you know, who's chaverim? Reb Zusha, Reb Zusha, Reb He had close chaverim from the G'dayli HaTalmidim. And he said, don't you know, don't you remember what the Magid said? That was can ufton a chassidish efabrengen kemalach michol nisht ufton. That what you can achieve by chassidish efabrengen, even malach michol can't achieve such a thing. So they gave him a bracha. So that's a babus devart that they say if a brengen has the power to give brachas. And many times in 770, you see people sit by Fabrengen, the people give over setlach asking for a fool and this and that. So there's a concept of what can uftana chasidish of a brengen, what a chasidish of a brengen can achieve. Well, what is taka chasidish of a brengen? One of the ways of explaining it that I heard from Rabbi Yoel Khan, one of the ways of explaining it is when you learn Torah, you're building bricks. You're building bricks and bricks and bricks. But bricks without a mortar is not a strong wall. Bricks without the cement can easily topple over. The fabrengen is the cement between the bricks. The cement between the bricks is mizetz back in the fabrengen. Now everybody needs a wall. Ani Everybody needs a, a wall to protect them. We're living in a we're living in a, a dangerous world. We're not in a very comfortable world in today's day and age. We're living in a difficult world, and our Protection is Torah and Mitzvah. That is our claim. But the Torah and Mitzvah, as great as it is and as important as it is, they don't have the cement between the bricks. The claim is not going to be a, a strong claim. The wall is not going to be strong. It can be toppled over. The Fabrengen is the cement between the bricks. That's the cement between the bricks. The amazing power of the Fabrengen that when people get together and they have this sort of aftos and the zinta nigam the zaflachayim that makes it all fit in place that cements it all in place this week's parsha is parsha zekev talks about the uh, shvidas haluchis amongst many other things discussed in parsha zekev so the rebbe nasiha discusses the the medrash that it says that Moshe Rabbeinu broke the luchas. Before he broke it, he saw Isis parchis. He saw the letters of the luchas were escaping. And then the luchas were rock, heavy rocks, and he couldn't hold it. It was too heavy, so he dropped it. So the Rebbe is explaining in that sicha that the Isis means the kedusha of the luchas. Moshe Rabbeinu, when he saw the Yidden were making the eagle, he felt that the luchas didn't have the power, the Kedusha. Isis is the, uh, what Abisha writes the Isis on the Luchas. So the Isis is the Kedusha that Abisha put into the Luchas, and all the Aseris Adibris. Without the Kedusha, so Isis, it's rocks. It might be a, a safe potato Shabola, but it doesn't have the Isis on it. So then, then it becomes too heavy. Then it becomes too heavy. So Moshe has no greater, he has to drop it. So maybe that's the same word of a Hasidic of bringing that we're living our lives. We're living our lives. We have uh, it, to live in the megash gash mystic world. It's it's could be could be a heavy journey. It could be a difficult journey. We need some kedusha, some achdos, and some kedusha to alleviate the heaviness of life. Fabrengen, getting together by Fabrengen, that is the Kedusha that takes the whole Yiddishkeit that we have, that maybe we feel sometimes it might be uh, a burden, feels like it's it might be complicated to hear, complicated to hear, but when you have the Kedusha, then you have a different mindset. You have a different mindset. To, you, it's it's a lot easier a lot easier to carry. It doesn't feel, doesn't feel like heavy anymore. It feels like like uh, like the, the marshal of the Baal Shem Tov gave, I recall seeing once the Baal Shem Tov gave the marshal, 
person was carrying a load of bricks on his back and he was sweating and he was upset and he was complaining. And the next day he saw the person carrying the same load, the same heaviness, but he was happy, dancing, singing all the way up the hill. And he asked him, yesterday you were sweating and complaining and you were bothered and today you're so happy. Because yeah, yesterday was uh, cement and bricks and and us, it was heavy and I had no, no, there's no, today it's uh, diamonds. Today it's diamonds, diamonds, the heavier it is, the better it is. <laughs> so, uh, so it's a mindset, it's a perspective. If we know that we're doing a journey and a purpose and there's, life has a meaning, we're not just going from one, from one space to another space. We're doing, we're doing, we have a mission, we have a purpose. This is also like the Bavusta story that the, by the Rebbe giving out dollars. And it used to be sometimes you had to wait two or three or four hours on a Sunday morning to get a dollar from the Rebbe to give to Tzedakah. And an old lady was waiting in line patiently and she finally got there and she couldn't control herself. She says, Rebbe, you're older than me. How could you stand so long? And, you, and a schmeichel to each person, it doesn't, you don't, you don't see tiredness on the Rebbe. You look at the videos, you don't see any tiredness. Every person is a new person. Every person is an, another shmeichel, another, another bracha, another shmeichel. There's no tiredness. So she says to the Rebbe, how can you do it? I'm standing in line. I'm not, this, I'm not exerting any energy. I, 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 I can't stand anymore. And you do it Sunday after Sunday with a shmeichel to every person. How is it possible? The Rebbe answered, when you're counting diamonds, you don't get tired. So it's a matter of perspective again. Counting diamonds, you don't get tired. So this is the Indian of Abraham the rocks. The, the Luchis, without the Ksiva, without the Ksava, the Luchis can be very heavy. If the Ksava is not there, Moshe Rabbeinu can't carry it. Moshe Rabbeinu was a keeper, but he couldn't carry the Luchis. Luchis, it was so heavy. So the Rebbe says the same thing is, when you have the Av and the Achaba, and you have the Achdos, so anything that might otherwise feel heavy in your life, all of a sudden becomes, carries. When you're high, you're carrying yourself. You don't, you don't feel the weight. So high doesn't feel the weight. Anyway, so that's what I think is the inyan of a The inyan of a is to give chayas to each other and to feel the unity with each other. So we're, we're not alone. We have everybody together. We're not alone. We're not alone because we have the Rebbe. We're not alone because we have Chassidim. That's the inyan of... Uh, no, Lachaim, Lachaim, next Nigan. Lachaim, Lachaim. Mulek Nigan. I I I I remember Sikha from the Rebbe that I was listening to when I was living when I was living in Melbourne. I was on Slichas in Melbourne. That's where I know Yochan and Narozov from. He was on Slichas there also. So I was living at that time in Melbourne, and he came as a Bokar. He was a Bokar on Slichas in, in for two years in Melbourne. Anyway, there was a Sikha Chof of Sikha, and we were listening to it on the hookup. So the, the, in Melbourne, when it's the Fabrengan time over here, at 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock over there, it's 14 hours or 15 hours ahead. So 10 o'clock over here would be 12 in the afternoon over there. Somewhere in the middle of the Fabrengan, the Rebbe was talking to Toichen, 
in the Tachin in Yonim, he was saying that Tfilis goes according to the place, Mokim Azman, Mokim and Zman, where you are. And he just threw in a Zayder Chagav in Hem Shechat Bodim. For example, in Australia, by them it's winter, and they say the same Talumotar. Now we know that we don't say the same Talumotar, we follow the Northern Hemisphere. Even though it's a big Shiloh, he's supposed to follow the Northern Hemisphere, not supposed to follow the Northern Hemisphere. In Northern Hemisphere itself, we follow Bava, we don't follow Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael starts saying the same Talumotar and, and Zayin. Zayin Cheshben, we say it was 60 days from Tkupas Tishrei to December 4th. So the Rebbe threw into the middle of the Sikha, and in Australia they're saying the same Talamata because for them it's winter. Fabrengen finished an hour or two later. We'd have a mincha right after Fabrengen, two o'clock in the afternoon, whatever. So someone gave a patch up on Tish. Don't forget to say the same Talamata. I was there, we said the same Talamata. Somebody ran right into Rabbi Groner. Rabbi Groner, the brother from the Groner over here. So Rabbi Yitzchak David Groner was the head of the whole Mesut in, uh, in Australia. Someone ran into him and said, what are the guys doing? They made an announcement to save St. Talamater. And he comes running into the base. My little mincha was finished already. He comes running into the shul. What's going on? Who said to save St. Talamater? And everyone answered, the Rebbe. No, the Rebbe didn't say so. No, the Rebbe did. Ask your brother. I'm writing to the Rebbe. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote to the Rebbe and he got an answer. You don't usually get an answer right away within the hour. He got an answer within the hour. And the Rebbe's answer was, I remember the ICS, the, the, the lotion of the answer. You shouldn't change the minute until now. It means you say the same bracha like the Northern Hemisphere. And don't make a new machlekes about does this and everyone else does this. I ask you the machlekes chadoshim. The yashkiu mirzum the mivsa avas yisrael. Put your energy into avas yisrael. So, even though the Rebbe said it before Yish Bayef Abrengin, but he said it with derech limud. He didn't mean he meant to say the rabban. I mean he meant to say that that's what his mind is noita. And um, but to change it, you have to have a vote of all the rabbanim. And yeah, both are right, you know, rave days, you know, whatever to change it. A few weeks later, maybe a couple of months later, there was the Likute Sikhs used to come out every week. So I recall there was a Likute Sikhs that came out, and there was about 10, 15 Myra McLeanness of Charlotte the Chubas that discussed the issue. Meaning to say, if anyone has any problems here, you can have a list of all Charlotte the Chubas discussing this issue, study it, and then you'll make up your mind. But when people change, the Rebbe said, no, you're going to start an Ayim Achleikas, you're starting an Ayim Minik, I'm not interested. Keep what you're doing. The Stammer Rabbanim decided, I'm okay to follow what Rabbanim decided. That was basically the answer. But the way that the Rebbe answered it, it the token of the Rebbe was interesting. Kas to start an Ayim Minik. And then you're going to start an Ayim Achleikas. And if you have energy, use your energy for Mifsa Abbasis Yom. Anyway, there's a very nice uh, um, word from Reb Leibig, the Yards of Reb Leibig, so we can have a, a word from him. He has Molly the Godish in his um, in his Ksavim. The Rebbe mentioned very often how the how the Ksavim, how he was able to write his Kedushim while he was sent away to Sabir. There was no paper, there was no ink, but somehow his Rebbe and schlepped some Sifri Hazayir to him. And the Zoyer had large margins, and he didn't have any ink. So the Rebbe's, and the Rebbe's mother would go out to the fields and get herbs or that you can grass of some sort and crush it into an ink, and they used that as the ink. And then later, by some miracle, she was able, when she emigrated to the United States, she was able to bring with her the Svarim. And I recall one Fabrengen, when the Rebbe was discussing that his mother brought the Svarim, he said that she had to hide this for him because who knows the Russians would give it. Like now, they have darkened this for him, the Lubavitch, and they're refusing to give it, even though what do they need? Some of the, of the Rabbeim, you know, the manuscripts of the Rabbeim, they have no value for the Russians. For us, it has a value. For them, there's no value. But they feel like they're giving up something, so they don't give it up. So the Rebbe was discussing how his mother, how his mother secretly slept, managed to get this for him of Reb Leibig, of a husband out of Russia. When the Rebbe said this, he said, and do you think, I think for one moment that the Russians didn't know 
course they knew. But they were they were my mind. You make believe that they don't know, so they make believe they don't know. That's why she took it. <laughs> anyway, so there's a beautiful, beautiful word from Reb Leibik, and he discusses the machlekas of Abai Berabba and a few different mistakes. And he starts off with books, and Gemara says about the Abai Berabba, they were both Talmidim, they were both ta they were both uh, Talmidim of Rabba. And when they were young, they were uh, Abai was brought up by Rabba. That's why his, his He's called Abayi because his name is his, 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 his name was Nachmeni, but Nachmeni was Rabbi by Nachmeni, so he couldn't call his Talmud his his Talmud that he's a adopted child. He couldn't call him Nachmeni because that's the same name as his father. So he called him Abayi, which was a Rashi Tevis Asher Becho Yerucham Yosun. The Rashi Tevis, a Yosun will get comfort if they see Abayi as in Yosun. He was able to grow up to be Abayi, so so he's okay. So there was this hope for everybody. That's more, that's what they say. The story he's called Abai because of that person. So when he was a little child and his Chavrusya Rabba, the two of them were little children. So the Gemara says, Rabba says to them, Who's the Abishta? Where's Hashem? So Rabba pointed up. Up is the ceiling. Abai ran outside and he pointed up. Up is the sky. So Reb Levick says, they were pointing to the level of Makif. We know in Kedusha, in the way the Ebishter's Hashpa to the bell, there's either Hashpa of Eifen Pnimi, or there's the Hashpa of Makif. Pnimi means you take it, or you absorb it, you understand it, and you relate to it, and it's something that's part of you. Makif is also part of you, but Makif is something above you, above your comprehension. It's not something that you can understand it, you can feel it and relate to it, but in a makifnik way, beyond, above and beyond the level of human uh, comprehension. Discusses it in Tanya a few times, makif and pnimi, and all over Hasidus, makif and pnimi is discussed. So in makif itself, there's makif akoriv and makif arochik. There's a makif which is related and close to the, to the pnimi. And then there's a makif which is a makif arochik. So usually you say, a makif akoriv is the begotten. The begotten, the clothes that you wear is a makif. But it's a makif akoriv because it goes to the measure, the size of the person. And the house is a makif harachik because everybody fits into the same makif. The house doesn't get measured according to each person. Whereas your begotten gets measured according to your size. But the house is everybody equal. So it's more equalizer than the, than the makif of begotten. So that's the... the in this story with Avai Virava, Reb Leibik says that the house was Makif HaKorit and the sky was Makif HaRochit. Meaning to say that Rava connected to Makif HaKorit and Abai connected to Makif HaRochit. And with this, he takes a few sugis and shas and explains them. First, for example, he starts off with the fact that the Gemara says that Abai Virava, they were both Kehanim and they were both descendants of Eli HaKoyim. And both were not meant to live long because Eli Akain was given a, a curse that his children shouldn't live long. So Rab, uh, uh, by even Rabba, so Rabba lived till 40 and Abai lived till 60. And the Gemara Frek, why, why did he Zaycha for an extra 20 years? Rabba, because he's a descendant of, uh, of Eli, he lived till 40 years old. Abai got 60, till 60 years old. So the Gemara explains because Rabba, the Asik Petoida, he got the schutz for 40 years. Abai Dawson Batoida Ugumilus Kasodim, he got an extra 20 years. So the, the Reb Levik explains it like this 40 is Gemachia Mem. Mem is Gemachia 40. 60 is Gemachia Samach. What's the difference between a Mem and a Samach? A Mem has a flat, square bottom. A Samach is a rounded bottom. The Nafkamina is a square bottom, even if it's a market, they're both market. The mem and the samak, they're both makin. If they, they're basically just a circle. Mem the samak beluchis, b'nei so yoimdim. So the mem and the samak, they're both makin, but the mem is a makin hakori because it has some stability because it's a flat bottom. The samak represents a makin harochi. That's why there's completely no stability. So again, he brought the example that rubber was makin hakori and abaye was makin harochi. Why Eli got uh, this punishment? 
because he was because uh, we have the thing that called me she yesh beyond the limb place vain and moicha who nitfas so his children were extorting doing extortion to get payments from the bnei yisrael more meat than they should have. Yeah, whatever. They were extortions. They were they were demanding payments from the day Israel. And he wasn't. And he wasn't Moicha and whatever. So call me Shiesh it's, it's a it's a it's it's a pretty harsh, it's a pretty harsh thing. But you know pretty harshly thing. Huh? He passed away to pretty harsh. Yeah, he fell back and this he was, oh, he's an older person already. He was yeah, he was 90 something. 99. Okay, but the Gemara is the Alter Rebbe says in Lukut the Torah, the Alter Rebbe says that uh, a chet kal of an Adam Choshu is pagan worse than a various chaburis of an Ish Choshu. So, Chot Asaira, we all know that, you know, Moshe Rabbeinu, what did he do? He, he just, uh, he's supposed to speak and he didn't. So we know that that, uh, that Tzadikim are measured with Chot Asaira, with a thin a thin measure, a thin hair, and, and so the Alter Rebbe says that Sadikim are nenesh b'chut asayra because by them a chet kal b'yoser is pagim more than a chet chomor vanish pasha. Go, go, figure that out. That's that's what he says. That's what's written in, in the Kuti Torah. B'shem amagid. So. So anyway, so uh, going on with the Makif HaKorib and Makif HaRochik, he brings an example. The Gemara has a, has a din by Kiddushin, the Gemara has a din by Gitin from the Al Kigan, Machlech is a What happens if a person is Mikadosh as an Isha, but he can't marry her because he was Mikadosh two sisters together. And he said he gave them both together, they were, or gave a person to be Zeicha for both of them. So it's Kedushin, Shalei Sulabiya. He gave Kedushin, but he can't marry them because he doesn't know which one. He gave Echad Mishnayim. One of you two is my is Mekudish to me. He doesn't know who he was Mekudish. So Kedushin, Shalei Nim Sulabiya. Rava says it's garnished. Can't be, it can't, you can't finalize the, the, the marriage. The Kedushin doesn't exist. Abai says, Osir. They're both Osir until he gives them both a get. So says the Reblevik, this is because we're talking about the level of Kedusha, of, which is the level of Makif Arochik. Makif Arochik, so according to Rav, it's not in his world. He doesn't relate to Makif Arochik. If the whole Kedusha is Makif and can never come in a Pneumius, that means to say it's Makif Arochik. It's not like a close which is close to the Pneumius. Pneumius is the person. So you put on a Beged, it's a Makif, but it's to your measure. So it's a Makif Akorit. Rav relates to Makif Akari. Rav was men. He relates to Makif Akari. You tell Rav there's a Makif Arochik. It's not in my world. It doesn't exist. Abaye, it's Makif Arochik. So when it's Kedushin, Shalinim Surulubiya, Rav says it's Garnish. It doesn't exist in my world. Abaye says it's Kedushin. Another example is by a person who sent a get to his wife with a Shliach. When the Shliach comes to her and he says, Here's your get, she says, Go home now, come back tomorrow. Okay, he listens. He went to her husband and he told him what she said. The husband just said, Baruch Thank God. Gemara has a machlekes by a rabba. Abai says, Baruch Hateva Hamitiv, Veloi Botol Gita. And Rabba says, Baruch Hateva Hamitiv, Veloi Botol Gita. So the machlekes is, when he said, Hateva Hamitiv, is Gilui Das Begito enough to be Mevatel again? Or Gilui Das Begito is not enough to be Mevatel again? Rabbi says, get his bottle, finished. He was Megala Das, to get his bottle. Abayi says, to be Mevatel again, he has to say Bedibu, get Zeb Botolu. He didn't say Bedibu, he was only Gilui Das Begito. So, how does that fit with the Shita of Abayi of Rabbi, the way the Red Labic explained? Yeah, Al Kigan, Allah is like a buy in, in this case. Oh. Bottle gita. Yeah, Beloy Bottle Gita. We have like a buy in this case. So, the Reb Levick explains what's the Machlekes based on. The Machlekes is based on if there's anything higher than Das. Gilly Das is a premius. The whole level of Das is a premius. And a get and Kedushin, according to Abai, is higher, not just premius, it's higher than that, it's market. So, Rabbi says, 
That's it. The Kedusha that I recognize by Kedusha and Gittin, they only reach a certain height. They reach Makif Akorit. Gilu Das, get, get, get is bottom. Abai says the get is not bottom because I reach Makif Arachik. In Makif Arachik, the Kedushan is still there. You can't be Mivatu Das, something which is above Das. So Gilu Das, the Git, the Veloy Botu Gita. So they both agree there was a Gilu Das. According to Abai, it doesn't help. I need something much stronger than a Gilly Das. Rubber, he reaches Gilly Das. That's his Madrega. That's his Mohosi. And even though he reaches Makiv, Makiv Akorik, if he reaches Makiv Arochik, that's beyond. That's beyond. We don't relate to Makiv Arochik. Anyway, so that, those are the, the, uh, the Vart. Uh, it's, it's more Marich. I can't remember. I don't think he brings it into Yish. Shloy Midas. Havi Yishloy, Havi Yishan. I think it fits into that also, but I, I think he maybe brings another one or two examples from Shas, but anyway, talks about the Indian of Makiv, and Makiv has to come in a premium. And this, whenever you talk to a Chabad Chosid Makiv, the first thing he tells you is Basukesh Teshbu, bring the Makiv into a premium. What's a Sukkah? Sukkah is a Makiv. Why did, why, when they asked him, why Chabad doesn't sleep in the Sukkah? The middle of Rebbe, Alp Rebbe's son, gave the answer. I can't sleep in a in a, in a makif and debina. He called it that level of sukkah is makif and debina. I can't sleep in makif and debina. Huh? The middle of Rebbe, he can't sleep in makif and debina. So the Rebbe explained it in a sikha. We'll say it's makif and debina, but we don't feel the makif and debina. Mainly the Rebbe, the middle of Rebbe, they they felt makif and debina, so he can't sleep. And the Rebbe explained it in a sikha of nigma. Makif and the Bino, and you're there, how can you sleep? You have Tsar. Tsar Potom in a sukkah. But what about us? I can sleep in the sukkah, I won't feel Makif and the Bino. Why are we exempt from a sukkah? The said, we are exempt because we have Tsar that we don't feel the Makif and the Bino. <laughs> okay, but actually, the fact of the matter is that all the Maimonim, not all, but in, you know, frequently. <laughs> Yeah, but there's That's many. The yeah, yeah, but the, the Rebbe brought a Gemara also. The Gemara says that when they were by Simcha's base, Hashareva. One second, you're listening. The Gemara, the Rebbe brought the Gemara of Simcha's base, Hashareva. It says in the Gemara Sukkah that by Simcha's base, Hashareva, they didn't have time to go to sleep. And they were up a whole night and they fell asleep on each other's shoulder. Aww. And by sleep, we know even Shinat Arai is Chayva Sukkah. So, how do they sleep? So we see, even the Zman Hashas, they already, they already slept on each other's shoulder. They didn't worry about the fact that they're not in a sukkah. Right, right, right. There's a tatum. It's a, the Ramah brings down, the Taz brings down, the Rebbe Shulchanor brings down, Shalom brings down. Everybody brings down the reason for the hetek. The Tzara Shava, like I once told to a cover of mine, said the Tzara Shava of all these poiskim, even though they come all from different angles, Tzara Shava is they're all looking for a limit schus. Why Hasidim don't sleep in a sukkah? <laughs> and they're all looking for Limus Kos. You have the Shalom, the Shalom bring, and you have the, the Taz, and you have the Ramad. Everybody's bringing this reason, that reason, this reason, that reason. <laughs> some, some, some Hasidim do, but Bells and Chabad don't. I don't know which other Hasidim. I don't, I don't know. The, there's many, many streams of Hasidim. I don't know all the streams of Hasidim. Those that sleep in a sukkah, Zosayin Sukkazun, right? <laughs> Bells doesn't sleep in the town. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I saw that online. I saw that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, he said, yeah. Litvish guy said, a good disaster that Chabad don't sleep in the sukkah because if they did, then there would be sukkahs on every street corner and every, in Tel Aviv. Did you sleep yet in the sukkah? Come inside. Here's some pajamas. Sukkah <laughs> mitzvah. Yeah, anyway, extra to you. But besides that, the Indian of a sukkah is a makif. When it says basukah is teshvu, it means the koyach of sukkah is to take a makif and bring it into teshvu. Teshvu is yeshiva. Yeshiva, like the Rebbe explained that, amen. Has yeshiva, it has it has where to stand. So a makif that has yeshiva is already reaching a pnimi. That's the union of Vasukas Teshu. Take the koyach, the, the energy of sukkas, and incorporate it into your daily life. Make the makif of sukkah, make it a pnimi. 
And that's the Koyach HaSukkah, that we have the ability to take a makif and make it a Pnimi. No? Rechaim, Rechaim. Rechaim is Pnimi, that's it. That's right. If you say a few Rechaim, then the makif becomes Pnimi. The first few is only a Pnimi. The next ones become a makif to Pnimi. Hey, <laughs> Explains a very nice thing about the union of Tfilin. By Tfilin, we know that in the parshas of Kadesh and Bahayu Kiviyako, it's written Bahayu Laisa Yochum, Uluzi Kodam Bene Nechum. Both times in Kadesh and in Bahayu Kiviyako, it says, doesn't say a second time Bahayu, it just says Bahayu Laisa Yochum, Uluzi Kodam, or Bahayu Laisa Yochum, Uluzi Topis. But in uh, in Vazchanan and Akev, when it mentions the mitzvah of Tfilin, it says, So it says a second time, From the second time, we learn the Indian that the Shoroish always has to be together with the Shoyad. You can't put on the Shoroish unless you have the Shoyad, unless you don't have the ability to put on Shoyad, you don't have a Shoyad. But normally you put on the shoyad and then the shoresh. When you take off, you take off the shoresh and then you take off the shoyad. Because the union of the the union of the shoresh has to be together with the shoyad. But Meidach Gisa, we find that in the in Parsha of, of uh, Kadesh and Kriyacho, it doesn't have a second time for Hoyu. It just says straight from the shoyad, straight to the shoresh. And and in that's in Kaddish and Vahik Yakam. But in um Vaskan and in Akib, when it says Ukshartam Aisam Laisa Yatum Bahoy Lut Topic Pen, it puts an extra Bahoyu. Ukshartam Aisa Yadha Bahoy Lutzi Topic Pen it puts in Bahoyu. So that's in Vaskan and in Akib. But in Kaddish Vahik Yakam leaves out that second Bahoyu. So it's like a hemshah, one hemshah, the Shoyad and the Shoresh. What's the Nafkamina says the Rebbe? 
there is two ways upon him how to look on the Shoresh. Do you look at the Shoresh as that's the peak of the mitzvah and the Shoyad is only a detail, but the main thing is the Shoresh? Or does the Shoyad have its own significance and the Shoresh has its own significance? And the Rebbe brought down the two Maimori Razal. One says like this, one says like this. Because one says the Ikir is the Shoresh, because it says, they're all the nations will see that you have Shem Hashem, they will have fear. And the Gemara says, that refers to film Shabarosh. It leaves out the Shoyah. And this is a Gemara that the Rebbe quoted, uh, or I think maybe from the, the Rosh, whatever, when in, during the during the campaign of uh, in the Six-Day War, right after the Six-Day War, and all the times in Eretz Yisrael, the Rebbe used to quote the Torah of Zeroya Av Kotkoit, that it says by God that they had the power of the Torah of Zeroya Av Kotkoit, and I'm, I'm pretty sure he quoted from the Rosh, that the Rosh said that was the Shos, the film Shoyan Shoresh, in Hilchus Tainus. Yeah, not Hilchus film, Hilchus Tainus film. Tanus. Yeah, Kitanus, he said. Yeah, yeah, it's film. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the Kitanus, right, right. Yeah, sure, yeah. I thought you said Tainus. Okay. I was wondering if we come to Rhine and Tainus. Yes, go on. Um, I recently read in the Big Big Tainu, um, as the Revelation did talk, there's a teaching every week that, that it's written in there. And uh, this week it was written to fill in. It was about the Shalyan and the Shalyan. This part. And it was, it was about. Um, so there's there's what why is why is the, the arm and the head put on what a there's something about a skull something about a skull that doesn't wear it doesn't have a crown. If I just, I'll, I'll just say what I know. Yeah. I'll just say what I know. I'll try to say what I know, and if you can help me, Yashikaya for for helping. Anyway, so there's a secret from the Rebbe who explains it very nicely. He says sometimes you have a thought of the Raya Ab So the Zroya gets importance. With the Roish gets importance. They're both important. And sometimes you say Elut film Shabaroish, as if the only importance is the Shabarosh. So he says that's the Nachamina between the way the Tfilin is written in Kaddish Bahai for Yachat, one mitzvah. There's no separation between the Shayyad and Shabarosh. Doesn't have another Bahayu. So the Shayyad and Shabarosh is all one mitzvah. And that would mean the Ik mitzvah is the Kedusha Shabarosh, Elut film Shabarosh. That's how the Gemara says it. So when it says in in our parsha, was in Ekev and the previous parsha was Chanan, when it says uh, an extra bahoyu, that means to say it's showing the significance of each one independently. So that's referring to the Torah of Zerayab Kotkei. So here in Bas Chanan Ekev, we're talking about Torah of Zerayab Kotkei. There's the there's the Chashivas of the Shoyad and the Chashivas of the Shoresh. And and um, and then Parshas Kadesh and Bahayi Kriyato Sishoresh alone. So the Rebbe explains it with Hasidish. This is the simple Nigla de Kibshat. And then he explains it with uh, Hasidish Oasis, which is also these Hasidish Oasis is brought down many times in Hasidish. But uh, to take it from a Makib to a Pnimi, we got to work on it. But the Lashin, the Lashin is in Makib de Oasis. So in Chassidus, it talks about these two levels. There's a level of Avaya Ba'adli or Adli Ba'avaya. When you look in the Swarish Forum and they spell out Yud Ke Vav Ke, they spell it out Yud Alif, Hey Dalid, Vav Nun, Hey Yud. So it's, it's Yud Ke Vav Ke, but it starts with Shem Avaya, with the Yud. That's why you know that in the in the Sudurim, I don't know if everybody's Sudurim, but in the Chabad Sudurim, two Yud makes up Hashem's name. Baruch HaTo Hashem, two Yud. Why? Because that's really Havaya Adni, the first Yud from Havaya and the last Yud from Adni. So it's Miram is on the Indian of Havaya Adni, but uh, Alter Rebbe didn't want to put in the Fedrish in Yom of Kabbalah and that. But if you look in the Svarish Sturim, I looked a few times, you see they spell it out many times, Havaya Adni. So that's Havaya Adni with Havaya, Havaya begins, so that means to say, that the Iker is the Koyach of Avaya, which is It's the Inyana, which is called in Oisius, Sachasidis, and Kabbalah, Yehudu Ilo. That's the Yehudu Ilo, the Yehud of Hashem's name, Ilo, on a higher level. 
to the extent that they say Yechud Yilah is as if Kaitim Bria Soil before the world was created, nothing existed. That's how it's now also in the eyes of Hakadosh Baruch Hu. When you say Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Achad, you think that this is Yechud Yilah. And then there's Yechud Tata. Yechud Tata is Adni Havaya. So it's either Shame Adni into Shame Havaya or Shame Havaya into Shame Adni. Adni is a lower madrega. Adoin Kol is a lower madrega. That's Yechud Tata. And Havaya is incorporated into Adni. So primarily we're talking about Adni and we're throwing in Havaya. Or primarily we're talking about Havaya and we're throwing in Adni. So there's two ways of looking at it. It's Adli Bahavaya is considered Yehudi law, and Avaya Ba'adli is considered Yehud Tata. So this is the way the Rebbe explains that Parshas Kaddish and Vahaya Kibiyata is Yehud law. It only talks about the Shoresh, because the Shoyad is the Yehud Tata. So that gets absorbed into the Yehud law of Shoresh. You don't talk about it because Yehud law incorporates it. But the Madrig is of which is already Moshe Rabbeinu giving up the leadership in the process of giving up the leadership to Yeshua. Moshe Rabbeinu, if he would have went into Eretz Yisrael, there would be no Mechamas, like Yerich, the whole Eretz Yisrael would be no Mechamas. But Yeshua came and had to be theater with Tachtoyim, he had to finemzich and do stuff on our level, not on the level of Yeshua or Moshe Rabbeinu. So Yeshua was more Levana, was more an Indian of recognizing that there's a Gashmi's Gashmistika world, and this Gashmistika world needs to be raised up. Moshe Rabbeinu didn't look, didn't see the Gashmistika world, but Moli Abai is Puli Oira. He was just Mamaila Lamata. There's no God, you got to tell him that there's Gashmistika world. For him, it was Elikos, and that's it. It wasn't. So Moshe Rabbeinu was the level of Yechud Ilah. Pashas Kaddish and Vahayik Vyachal, that's Yechud Ilah. That's why it doesn't mention the Shalyat so much. It's incorporated into the Shalresh. Pashas Vazchan and Nekiv is already in. It's already in the process of getting out of Moshe Rabbeinu's hands into Yeshua, Yeshua bin Nun's hands. That's already, the whole Chumash Tabarim is already, like the Gemara says, Moshe Mithiatz. That's my own right. The whole thing of Chumash Tabarim is Moshe Rabbeinu re revising everything from the first four Chumashim. So Moshe Mithiatz, my own taste, says, Baruch HaKadosh. But however you want to look at it, it's Moshe Mithiatz, my soul. It's already going into a recognition that there is a veld. The veld has to. Yeah. Raise itself up to a to a likus. So that's called Yehud Tata. That's why you have the Torah of Zroya Kotka, Dafki, and Vazchan and Nekev, not in Kaddish and Vahik Viyacha. Kaddish and Vahik Viyacha was representing the concept of Yehud Ilo. And Vazchan and Nekev represents the concept of Yehud Tata. Yeah. Okay, no, Nigun, because you know the the, the Fabrangan is the cement, but cement without water is, it doesn't doesn't hold also. So the water is the lachayim. No, we can have some.
Okay, I'll tell you another sikha. I don't know how long you guys want to go on for. Another another five minutes is good. What? Four? Good, ten minutes. Okay, good. So there's a nice uh, sikha from the Rebbe. He, touch, he touches the first few words. V'hoya ekev tishmuun. Ekev is a heel. And Rashi says straight away, im ha-mitzvah sh'adum dosh ba-akev of tishmuun. And then you'll get all the rewards and mention it further in the parasha. So ekev reminds us of the heel. Reminds us of the ikvah of the Meshicha, the heel, the, the, the heel of time when kind of went through all the madrigas, went through the madrigas of the Reish, the Leib, the Yodayim, Raglayim, we're up to the Ekev, ikvah of the Meshicha. But anyway, Pesach says, Bahaya Ekev, Tishmon, the mitzvahs that are like an Ekev. Why are mitzvahs like an Ekev? Because people tread on them, step on them. There's two opposing Medrashim about Dover and Melech. The one pasuk of Rav Melch says, "Bishamram Ekebra." Um, how does the beginning of that pasuk say? Um, Bish, uh, it's in Kapitel Yutes. Um, anyway, if not, can I have it till when we look it up? Thanks. Yeah, yeah, I find it. It's it. It's in Kapitel Yutes and Kapitel Memtes. A steer between Kapitel Yutes. I have it. I have it. In Kapitel Yotes, Moshe Rabbeinu, not Dabra Melch saying, Kam Abdecha Nisar Bahem, Bishamram Ekev Rav. Also, your Evid was careful in your mitzvahs, Bishamram Ekev Rav. I am careful with the mitzvahs of Ekev, the mitzvahs that other people step on, I keep. And the Medish makes a whole big deal about it. I think it's Medish Tankuma, that Meish, uh, the Dabra Melch is saying, You think it's because it's a mitzvah's callous that other people. Ignore, I don't, I am Shamra Mekev Rab. I keep the mitzvahs, even those mitzvahs that other people are not careful with. Then you look to a uh, you look in Kapitol Mem test, and there, my, uh, there, Dabra Mel says, Lama Ira Bemeiro, why am I afraid? Avena Kevai, Yisubeni, the various of my Akif are circling me. So, what's going on in Kapitol? You test, he was clear. The Shomer Mekev Rab, I keep the mitzvahs of Akev. Comes to Memtez, he's already worried. Abain Akeva Yisubeni. The Averis of Akeva is circling me. And I think the Rebbe quoted over here, I didn't look up the Sikh, but I think he also quoted a Medish over here that my Dobra Melch was afraid, afraid Shema is Shlachti Achar Akeva. So what's going on? It's a state of the two Medrashim, it's a state of two Psukim. One major says how Dovr was sure about himself that he even kept the mitzvahs of Aiken. And the other one, he says, I'm worried about Abay Nakevai. I wasn't keeping the mitzvahs of Aiken. So the Rebbe looks at the two Medrashim and he says, ah, that's the difference. The major that says Dovr Melch was careful, he says, I didn't step on those mitzvahs. The major that says he wasn't, he's afraid that he wasn't so careful, he says, Shema Hishlachti Acher Akevai. I put them after my heel. Not that I stepped on them. So this is not Kaminim. Dabra Mela and his Madrega was saying, I didn't step on the small mitzvahs. I revered them. I considered them important. But what he was saying at the same time, saying, I was afraid I put them for last. Shema hishlachti achar akevai. I kept them. Maybe there were other important mitzvahs that I did first, and this was not so important. I'll keep it for later. So to step on them, Itaka didn't step on them. But maybe he kept them for later. So there's no city between the two Medrashim. So this is also connected to uh, Pshat in, that the Rebbe says Pshat in, in the Rambam, in Perky Ovis, we say, um, Be careful with the Mitzvah Kala, like a harsh Mitzvah, because you don't know the value of Mitzvahs. Right in the next line in the Mishnah states, that heavy mechashiv hepsid mitzvah connected sechara was charaveder connected hepsedo. So normally we teach heavy mechashiv hepsid mitzvah. If you're spending money on a nice esrog, yeah, you feel like spending the extra money. You're supposed to spend achlish. You don't know why. Why do I have to spend one hundred fifty dollars on an esrog? I can spend a hundred dollars just as nice, maybe not so nice. Hundred dollars good enough for me. Fifty dollars good, enough, whatever it is. Why do I have to spend so much on an esrog? So, 
So that having a chashev hefset mitzvah. Think about what you're giving up. You're giving up a few dollars. Okay, you'll make the dollars back. They will still give you money somewhere. Kinegis chara. Just think about how valuable the mitzvah is. The the next and the mission goes. I have mechas the hefset mitzvah. It's called chara veiro. Kinegis hefseido. What are you doing? You're doing the schara veda. Okay, you schara veda. I'm going to work on Shabbos. I have to work on Shabbos. Or I have to work on Tishko. I have to work on Purim. Or whatever. So think about the schara veda. What are you gaining from that? Can I get have seda compared to the amount of loss? That's the simple shot in the Mishnah. Look in the Rambam Pirish Mishnayis. The Rambam Pirish Mishnayis says if you want to know the value of a mitzvah, mitzvah's essay, look at the chisarin of the mitzvah's law. says that. Because mitzvah essay, we don't really say difference in schar. Every mitzvah essay is oil and hava. Schar mitzvah mitzvah, you get it, you get even hava for mitzvah essay. But mitzvah says that we have levels. There's levels. There's makas mardus. There's mak 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 malkus. There's there is as loisus session in takla essay. You don't get malkus. There's uh, then there's then then there's chayiv misa. Then there's chayiv pores. Chayiv misa de shemayim and misa talu bez. There's Levels, many levels, many levels for mitzvah says yeah. Mitzvah says is one level. Do a mitzvah, you get rewarded. Dr. Rambam, if you want to know the value of a mitzvah says it, compare it to the loss of that loisus that connected to that. If you want to know how choshev keeping Shabbos is, see how bad the punishment for Hillel Shabbos is. Correct the Rebbe, it's just the opposite of what we just said a minute ago, a line ago. The line before that in the Mishnah, Perky always says, well, I'll do yesh v'shekel mitzvah says so. It says be machash. What's the lashon over there? Be be machash. Be hefsi. No. Be be zor. Be mitzvah kala kibachamuda. So there you're saying mitzvah kala kibachamuda. They're all equal. And then the very next line you're saying there's differences. And there's giving you a way to measure the differences. How does that fit with be zor? Be mitzvah kala kibachamuda. So I'm sure there's many um, the parshim that explain the Rambam. The Rebbe explains it in a very nice, nice way. Chasidish oisius, but mamish nigla, easy nigla. The Rebbe explains every mitzvah, every mitzvah sesi, and every mitzvah says uh, has two aspects. It has the aspect of rotzen Hashem, and then there has the aspect of kedusha that you play with the mitzvah. Every loisa uh, has two aspects. It has the aspect of the chisarin achet, and then it has the aspect of also Hashem. You have the aspect of this not doing rotzen Hashem. So every mitzvah that, that's why you know that essay is doich loyses. Meiduch kiso. If you didn't do a mitzvah essay, and neizos mishon matchemaychlin loy. If you didn't do a mitzvah loy to say, you have to do tshuva until yom kippur and yom kippur is moichel. And this Dalt Rebbe asked the Shailin, the first page of Agar Satchuva, what's going on? If Essay is doich loisasa, Essay is more machmir. So why do you tell me to do more chuva for loisasa? Should have to do more chuva for an essay. That's the Shailin, the first page of Agar Satchuva. And the answer is, it gives right there and then there, it gives a very simple answer that when you do a loisasa, you didn't listen to Ratzon Hashem. When you do a mitzvah essay, you did Ratzon Hashem. When you didn't do a mitzvah essay, the Gemara calls it Me'ubis lo yuchol You cannot correct it. Gives the example of a person who didn't say Kriya Shema Bizmano. If you missed out a mitzvah essay, it's Fafalim. You cannot correct it. Me'ubis lo yuchol So your tshuva is not going to fix it. Why do you do tshuva when you do tshuva for a mitzvah essay? You're doing tshuva because I didn't listen. Say, I'm sorry I didn't listen. Your father tells you, go to the store and buy me a bottle of milk, and you didn't. Come back later at night, and he says, you know, I had a coffee, I had a black coffee, I needed, a, I needed a bottle of milk. So you say, I'm sorry. He says, okay, sorry, sorry, but I didn't have my coffee the way I liked it. So you're missing on the mitzvah says it, but you're not making up. The bottle of milk is still not there. It might be for tomorrow, but for today, it wasn't there. It's Mubus Loyupolistri. Whereas when you're doing tshuva for a mitzvah slay, says, uh, you have to correct the fault. If you throw a rock into someone else's window and, and you break his window, it's not going to help enough to say, I'm sorry, I broke your window. 
if boys are playing baseball and then the ball goes flying into someone's window and it breaks the window, it's not going to help say, oh, Mr. So-and-so, I'm sorry, we were playing baseball and the ball went flying and broke your window. He's going to say, you know what? Fix it. I'll be my you, but you have to fix my window. So when you do tshuva for Elisa, say you have to fix the chisarim. When you do tshuva for mitzvah zesa, there's not, you can't fix the chisarim. So that's why mitzvah zesa, you're only doing tshuva to say, I'm sorry. So that you can do straight away. As he says in Gersha Tshuva and Perk Yudalif, Hamar Belisloyach. Why is it called Hamar Belisloyach? Because by the Abish there, there's no ribu, there's no meal. Being that the Abish is bleak wool, so he can't say, well, I was Michael you once, I can't be Michael twice. And he brings an example of a, a Ben Oman. If you offend somebody once, okay, he's Michael you. Twice, with difficulty, he's Michael you. Three times he warns you, that's it, I'm not going to be Michael you again. Four times he says, listen, I'm Michael you three times. And you don't listen, and you keep on offending me. I'm not Michael you. So that's by a person. But by HaKadosh Baruch Hu, one time and ten times and a hundred times is the Chayin Yohan. You can't build it. There's no measure because Hamar because the Abish should believe all of the Baruch One time and a hundred times is Hainu Ha. So there's Hanun Hamar Bilisloya. The Abish doesn't care if you were over that Avera yesterday and today you come again and do the same Avera and and do Tshuva. That's the way the life is. That's the way it is. The Abish is Michael the first time, the second time, and the tenth time, just like the first time. Okay, so that's what Mitzvah says. But when there's a Mitzvah Slaysa says, it's not just enough to say, Rebbein Shalom, I'm sorry. You also have to be moiche. You have to wipe out the chet, the begot, the begam, the begam. Mm, sorry. You have, to be, you have to wipe out the begam, the begam that you caused. Well, yenim, tachtoinim, that takes time. You can't be, wipe it out just by saying, Hashem uh, uh, No, you have to wipe out the begam. So that takes more time. It doesn't happen until Yom Kippur. So based on these two concepts of every mitzvah says and every mitzvah says, uh, this is the way the Rebbe explains the Rambam. First, it says that we zarb mitzvah because there's no difference in mitzvahs, even though the lashon is einat yedeya. But the Rebbe is learning there's no difference in mitzvahs. Misad rotzin Hashem, the mitzvah kalosh bekalis is just as valuable as the mitzvah chamosh bechamudis. The smallest mitzvah has the same. Tashivas in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu as the biggest mitzvah. So that's how we saw the mitzvah Kalak Vachamudu, because you're looking at Ratz and Hashem. What does Debshah care? Does Debshah need, does he need us to put on, does he, Ke'ilum, Imsodakto, Matitin Loi? Does he need us to put on film? He needs us that we're doing what he wanted. So there's Ratz and Hashem and keeping Ratz and Hashem. So that's how we saw the mitzvah Kalak Vachamudu. So there, all mitzvahs are equal. Then he says that you can compare, ah, the Rambam is going to the next level of mitzvahs. The level in mitzvahs that has effect on this world. It, either it's a mitzvah that it brings kedusha, or it's a mitzvah slice, it prevents klipas. So they have effect on the world on the level of Yehuda Tato, the way we say. So on our level of comprehension, there's differences. Mitzvah says it brings kedusha, mitzvah says it prevents klipas. So there's a whole bunch of levels. On that, says the Rambam, when you're talking about the lower level of mitzvahs, then you can compare mitzvah sese, have a mechashim, have said mitzvah, connected to schoda, the way the Rambam explains it, because he's talking about the madrega shnia in mitzvahs, sese, mitzvah sese. So I think that's a, a brilliant shot taking Oisisa Hasidis, explaining the Rambam. I think it's, it's just brilliant, in my opinion. I hope everybody, I hope everybody enjoys it as much as I enjoy it. The mitzvah, the mazal. Some of them is tamor, some is kal. The mazal for the mitzvah. And <laughs> this is um, the Abishtas, the Abishtas, the idea, the way the Abishta made the vehicles, how we connect to him. Like the Alter Rebbe says in the Kuti Torah, even is tavinu lachtoiv eitzim. If the Abishta gave us a mitzvah, go chop wood. We would do it with the same simple as we do mitzvah tfil. What does it mean we would do it with the same simple? It means to say, if he gave us the mitzvah, lach toiv eitzim, and there's no kedush involved, there's just lach toiv eitzim, you're not getting anything from it. We would do it with the same simple. Because it's bringing out the concept that, as far as one way of looking at it, it's Ratzon Hashem. Ratzon Hashem, that's all I'm interested. Madregas, this Madregas, this Madregas, that's all we'll leave it for the couple list. We don't know the Madregas. But that's what the Rambam was referring because every mitzvah has two stages, two levels. Anyway, I, I'm going to say a, a beautiful story from the Alter Rebbe. 
And uh, can we call them quits after the story? There's a few Nibunim after that? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, there's a nice with the Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe, many, many stories with the Alter Rebbe. There's a nice with the Alter Rebbe that when he was at the big Vikuach, I think it was in Minsk, the Alter Rebbe was called to a big Vikuach with the Misnagdim of his day. And Ola Richus, the Vikuach, went on for, for a week or two. In that Vikuach, one of the things that they asked, there was two questions that they asked the Alter Rebbe. One question they asked the Alter Rebbe is, why is the Shittas HaBal Shemta to be Mekarev, the Ish Poshut B'Yoyser's Mekarev, as if he's a Talmud Chochem, and they said, they explained it, it's Poshut B'Zoyin for the Talmud Chachomim, that the Tzadikim, like the Bal Shemta, the Magid is Mekarev, the Ish Poshut. The Alter Rebbe himself said that when he first came to the Magid, and he saw people were saying till the Islavos, he felt for sure these were people that are Baki Bishas and Baki Bikabola. That's what he felt when he walked in. He saw me, the Islavos, this. And he started speaking to them. He said, Oh, come, come, they can't blood Gemara. Now, Trevor, when he came to the market, you know, it was very Baki Bishas many times over. He didn't uh, he didn't come as a Ish Posh. He came as a Khosha Bayit when he by the time he came to the market, he was already like 18, 19 years old. But he was, you know. Very well versed in Shas. And he saw, he thought, he came there because he wanted, he says that he came to the Magid. The story goes that he had two roads, one that leads to Vilna, one that leads to Misrich, and he wanted to know which one, he didn't know which one he should go to. Then they told him in Vilna, they teach you how to learn, and Misrich, they teach you how to daven. So he said, learn and can't learn and shem. Uh, this will best against the Misrich, learn and this to daven. So that was his. That was his uh, reason to go to position. He saw that they were davening the Islamists. He thought that they were, he thought that they were on his level. You know, they're Bokhi Bashat, Bokhi and Sipra Kabola. And they're davening with that feeling that they have from their ideas. And he started talking to them. And he saw, I'm not sure shoot in the Come, come, they can learn a black Gemara. So he's taken aback that that's, that that's what the market encourages. I'm not sure shoot him to this. Anyway, so... Um, that was the first question they asked him about the Vikur Rabbi in Minsk. They asked him, why is the Shita Sampa Shem to Mikadiv to Ish Posh to such a high level? Question number two, question number two, they asked the Alter Rebbe, why does the Bashem to the Shita Sakhasidis say that Kol Yom of Bachuba, even though it's probably a Lashna Gemara, but he emphasized it that you always have to do Chuba. And they were saying, Posh doesn't make sense. You tell the Amad the Bar that every person, everyday person, that even the Tamid the the Tzadikim, they also doing tshuva. So it means they're on our level. They're also doing tshuva. Same as us. We're doing tshuva. They're doing tshuva. The same. That with two questions, the Alter Rebbe answered them. Says those two questions bothered Moshe Rabbeinu in the first appearance of Elikus to Moshe Rabbeinu by the Sneh, and the Abish to answer him those two questions with one appearance in the Sneh. What happened? Moshe Rabbeinu sees a snare by your ba'ish, a snare in any ukon. Snare is burning and burning and doesn't get consumed. The fire is a continuous fire. Moshe Rabbeinu does a sura no ve'era. As a matter of God, does that? Madua lo yivar a snare. A sura means to go away, but Moshe Rabbeinu was saying, "I'm coming closer." Zok Rashi, a sura mikan leskarev lishon. So he's using the word a sura when he's trying to say the word eskarev. So what's going on is this is a, a, a this is a dialogue between our Kaddish Bok and Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, who was Das Elyon in his generation. In Isis Kabbalah, Moshe Rabbeinu was from Shemitah Rishayna. He wasn't part of the world that he lived in. He wasn't Klaus Shaykhus, the world that he lived in. Me'ayinli Basar, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't recognize Basar. You can eat meat, how can you eat meat? He couldn't give me that wasn't his madrega. Like a bitch, uh, Masmid came to raise funds in America, came back to the Pritika Rebbe and Pritika Rebbe in Europe, whatever, in the 30s, whatever, before the Pritika Rebbe came to America, or maybe the 20s. I don't know which year the bitch Masmid, he has many grandchildren in Chabad nowadays. And he asked them, No, what did you see from uh, American Jews, American Jewry? He says, Well, you woman, you won't believe it. He couldn't understand it. Flesh, yet and not every night is meat. And he didn't even say meat, he said meatballs. They eat meatballs every night. 
it, but him it didn't 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 register, just didn't register that that megushim dig as they megushim dig as they feel harangaton in the gashmi is flesh yet and nach. Okay, so we're we're not so disposed from flesh yet and nach. We we know there's more to life than flesh yet and nach. But he took it flesh yet nach. He lost his mind. Moshe Rabbeinu lost his mind. May I and Lee Bosser the Yidden are crying for Bosser. He said, I can't. I can't relate to this. They don't bust Moshe Rabbeinu was Mishmita Rishayna. He didn't b'chal belong to this world. Anyway, so Moshe Rabbeinu comes and he sees the snares by your Ba'esh. Snare is the smallest tree. It's a cactus and it has a fire. And he realizes that David is telling him if this fire would have been in a tree, all the mitzvahs of the persons like a tree. Tzadik atomah yifra. A tzadik is like a tomah that gives shade. Kedis bavlani yisgor. It's a tzadik that grows high in his madrega. But it's wood. The fire burns on the wood, the wood gets consumed. When the fire burns on the cactus plant, and the ish poshut biyoser, nishken bain, nishken eres, nishken tamar, that's where the fire has a continuous fire. Why? Because a tam is called matzadik. If he feels his eidus and he wants to be nuskaris, takes out a gemara above a common land up seven black gemara, he's happy. Or if he has a Hasidic event, takes out a look at the learns 10 blocks, look at the Torah. He feels his, he feels his market pithmimius. So he doesn't feel his burning desire anymore because he satiated his hunger, his thirst. His thirst for Kiru, Kiru Lelikus. He learned to Perik, a Perik Tanya. He learned to do Prabhu Tanya. Now he feels Korin. <clears throat> so the Aish, Bayer Baish, the fire burning with him, not such a big fire anymore. It became more settled in his mind. The Ish Poshul can't learn, can't take out a Gemara and learn ten blah, can't take out a Hasidus and learn ten blah. When he has the Hisoyrus, it's a it's a permanent Hisoyrus. It's snap by your Baish, Vashna, and then it will go. The fire is burning and burning, and there's nothing to nothing to grab onto to make it less, to make it more settled, to make it more. Into comprehension. There's no comprehension. The comprehension level levels out the the the, the inspiration. So Thomas Chacham, when he has inspiration, he has comprehension. So he balanced. The Ish Poshu doesn't have the comprehension. He only has the inspiration. He has the inspiration. He has the inspiration. It's like a like a like a heart that can't stop beating because it doesn't have with what. Moshe Rabbeinu sees this. He realizes that he's not so great as he thought he was. And he has to do tshuva. How do you do tshuva if you don't have any avedis? The tshuva of a tzaddik is baruch toshu velo likin. As much as you're close to a likus, you're still distant. Baruch toshu velo likin. So Meishu Rabbeinu has to do tshuva. A suda, a suda is a lotion of tshuva. He can't do tshuva from to be nisrachik from chatom. He has no chatom. His tshuva is a suda mikan is kind of nishom. I have to realize that I'm still rochik rochik mehavayim. So in the one. Answer it gave them satisfied their both both of their prompt complications. Yes. What was that process that you mentioned about um, referring to the name of the buyer? Asher Bukha Yerucham Yosin. With you will be comforted the, the Yosin. The, the Chaim Lachaim. We should meet many times of many simchas, many Fabrengans, beautiful congregation you have over here. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you for coming. Yeah, Shikaya, thanks for having me. Thank you for having me. Shikaya. He was in Wisdom, remember? No, I was in the, in the Kailo, and he was in the Yeshiva, Yeshiva Gadoilo. His father was the Lokish. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's, he's yeah, was that right. in Morristown? What? You went to the Morristown? I, I, I was in Morristown, yeah, a, a number of decades ago. Not Moon, a number of decades ago. Who? Are you from Minnesota? No, my brother is in the first one. How do you stop it? I think he's about to say the time. The time, the time, the time. How, how many moons ago was your eldest father? It's not moons, it's decades ago. How many decades? Your eldest father's movie about five. Oh, when it was made. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. We we're in something. Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Good to see you. Wait, no. That's a, I was coming from the Babaji Shiva, went to Marsan. Okay. In Lambeth Bay, the first year they opened. Wow. 
in Tumka, yeah, the first year. Uh, they that's when Tumka moved from there to there. From Lourdes. That's from when Lourdes. they moved, yeah, from Lourdes to there. So I was there in Tumka on the day. So you know. So that's uh, a while back, yeah? You were in Marstown? No. no. So let's go in there. Double chin? You know. Double chin? I think he was up to heaven when he went straight to the I don't think the Dalton was in Mars. He was You know someone by the name of Bass? Oh, I don't He wrote the Rebels. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, like the of the Oh, Sagan, a lady. Oh, Sagan, a lady. Oh, Sagan, a a lady. Nice. about Marco Polis. He says, the guy is Balta Fulis. Balta Fulis. The line is wrong, but Balta Fulis. Thank you so much. Yeah, the truck gets stronger. Yeah, I need a Don't forget the baby in front of China. Thanks. Oh, I'm in there. Darwin, no? Uh, Darwin. Darwin, I didn't know. I wouldn't. I didn't know. Ah, no. Ask around. I don't know. I didn't come back. I'm here together with my friends. Right. Learning. There's time together. Sorry. I'm running in Paris. I think that he, uh, no. I mentioned the time. One second. Sean Latham, Paris. What's your name? Eliezer Shimon Lieberman. Eliezer Shimon Lieberman, you're in Paris over there in Marstown. Yeah. Call me Aishel. Ah. The Russian right. name is Aishel. Beautiful. I was distracted, but the difference is that I've been digging up in this place. Which one? Which one? About not not in this place. What was your answer? <laughs> I'll be I'll be There's the you have to look up in the Ramah. I didn't say the Ramah in the past. And I'll be there. I'll be Nister. It's brought down that it's an Indian of Mishtar. That's a combination of Nigla and Nister. Yeah. But the real why is it Mistar? Because of because of oh, Makif and Dabino. Makif and Makif and Dabino. And you you have Tsar from Makif and Dabino. I always think, and what about the Tanomino Miram? They didn't have Tsar Makif and Dabino? So I think because <laughs> as the time goes on, so Hasidus became more prevalent, more no more noticeable, more available for the general Hamainan. So Amina became familiar with the concept of Makib and Dabino, so it became something that Klaus so can can relate to Makib and Dabino. By them, and it was only for Yechidah Segula, Rashbi, and Rababa. It was only certain people, so it wasn't, they didn't pass him based Pasha on Makib and Dabino. Huh? Yeah, so there. I know. But you have, you have the Ramad. The Ramad says because he can't come in Shabbat. Right. What's your name? Sorry. Oh, yeah, you said to ask. What's your first name? Robert. Robert. Let's go. What's your name? I might, you're taking what? Brief. Yoel Brief. Brief. Nice. Okay, so. Oh, really? You're from California? Los Angeles, for sure. I mean, everybody. You say California. My son is in Folsom. You know where Folsom is? Folsom, California. <laughs> See, Los Angeles, never heard of Folsom, California. Where's that? That's in uh, Northern California, outside of Sacramento. Wait. I know, but it's so funny. If you ask somebody in Folsom, Los Angeles, <laughs> they know Los Angeles. Ask someone in Los Angeles, Folsom? Well, where's Folsom? Where's Folsom? Is that is that maybe in Oregon, Nevada? No, no, no. Zachless is nearby, yeah. Zachless is in back of them. I know. Yeah. Zachless has a beautiful cabana. Very, very nice. Yeah, the very you can go online and see it. It has a very, very nice Chabad. My son doesn't have a nice base Chabad. He doesn't have a base Chabad. So he, he's ignored the Zachos? 
No, Zachlis between uh, Folsom and San, San Francisco. Zachlis is halfway between Folsom and San Francisco. Folsom is east of San Francisco, two hours. He's exactly like just under one hour from Folsom. So he's like 45 minutes from Folsom. Yeah, well, how far is he away from Orange? Miles. No, miles. That's very far from Orange. He's, he's probably got to, to go to the border of California. Probably has another six hours to drive. Oh, oh, California, Oregon. Cal from California, from the thing from from Northern California, where the Chabad houses are. Yeah, it's yeah. probably six hours to get to the border. It's very far. You are related to the brother Stein over here. Uh, my brother is related more. I'm related through my brother, oh, and he's related through his brother. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Now I don't understand. No, your brother, your brother, oh. Ben Sia. You know, mentioned him, mentioned him. His brother is his cousin. Oh, it's his cousin? Yeah, oh, yeah, I thought it's your yeah, brother. Probably. Oh, your brother's brother. I thought he was your brother. I see your cousin. We're like brothers. We're very close. We hiked up together with him. In oh, the okay. In my name. We lived, when we were living in Crown Heights, we moved to the Bronx because my father was a rough. So when I uh -huh. came to, when we Okay, so you're close when with Ben Sia. That's the disease. Yeah. My father sent me to Montreal. You know, you know our good friend Schleimer. Is, uh, so your cousin Ben Sien is is my nephew's father-in-law. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's Zalman. Zalman is a Zalman is a Heverman. Yeah. His son-in-law, Zalman Brusbaum, is a Heverman. He was one Zalman of Iron? not Zalman Iron. <laughs> Zalman he's also Brusbaum. Yes, yes, no. But today is Zalman Zalman Brusbaum from uh, Livingston, New Jersey. He's close to Yared and uh, and Livanka. He brought them to the oil the night of Shabbos before election from Kalalek. Um, you know, Mister Mugini. I don't know. Why? How do my son know him? Oh, no, it doesn't make sense. He was 40 years now. Um, do you know Mrs. Heidelbaum? Mrs. Heidelbaum. 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 From New Jersey, from Mars? Yes. You know the Heidelbaums. Oh, yeah, there's the Heidelbaum there. You saw the Heidelbaum. Probably. What? Well, yeah, you know anybody called Hospital Street? You live in Stern Street, yeah? No, 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 just your uncle. Who lives in Stern Street? We live in Stern Street. Gary. Yeah. But you're Mishpah, your uncle, no? Yeah, yeah. Your uncle, no, yeah, yeah, children. She's still alive, right? Yeah, it's probably like 100. Right? No way. She was teaching up until three years ago. And she made a deal with them that one of Ross's daughters, a couple of years, wanted to become a teacher or a grand or whatever it was. Then she was a co teacher. She used to walk. She used to walk with a big girl. She didn't want to walk with a walker. So what did she walk with? Mm -hmm. She would walk with the bagel, but then later on, one of the grandchildren used to always take her to the house the first place, used to walk up that hill. Crazy, 95, 95. Okay, let's get going. My other aunt is also a lot of I don't know what. You know what I tell people when they come to me? Oh, you come on to sell? No, but I know I'm not family. What is not? It's usually sold there. You got the name for it. Shall I go? Thank you. 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 In, in not in Yeshiva, just in uh, oh, in, in, Can in Crown Heights. We used to meet ah. every other day and learn. Okay, I'm coming. Uh, what, brief, what's your first name? Yo 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 yo, yo yo. Doctor Fatma Reb, beautiful. Fatma Reb is quite the nachos now. His his last name his last name's brief. Got it. It's short. Yeah. Very. It was short. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
And yeah, and yeah, Yisuf also doesn't seem to be so urgent. Yisuf also does not seem to be so urgent about yeah. Yeah, 